Hey, good morning. Michael Lipinski again. Sorry for the product placement. All right, so we made it through the stairs, but we, uh, we've got so, so, so much more uh, to do to go back over that. I'll be out of the office today, um, probably right after lunch, so I won't be able to uh, throw any other content up there. But I'm finding this talk therapy is really helping. It's not helping me with my nasty habits, you know, but it is helping. Helps good, right? Every man has his vice. So where are we on our quest in building information modeling? Well, I hope if you're following along, you've been able to ascertain whether or not I'm well within my faculties. In addition to that, I hope that I'm able to articulate the message that I'm trying to convey to you. It's important to me. Communication and uh, those types of things play a big part in building information modeling. So we're on chapter 17. And we won't stop there. We discussed this earlier. We're going backwards now. In the MEP sector, in the construction uh, sector, backing up into the engineering and architectural sector, and then we're going to delve right back into the MEP sector. I just so happen to live in a town that's an industrialized town. I started my career with a jackhammer inside Exxon Bayway in Elizabeth, New Jersey, for Labor's Local 54, inside of a reactor, shipping gunite out of the inside of the oil refinery. So over the years, I uh, worked millions of jobs, and I've done lots of research, and I've met lots of people. I've been lots of places, had lots of problems, and some were, uh, some seemed insurmountable to me at the time. But the older I get, and the more I persevere, the more I find that if you put your mind to something, it can come to fruition. And it has for me, to a certain extent, because my goal in life is to uh, rest in peace and to uh, achieve a certain peace of mind. And again, this software has more to do with what it does to the individual and the organization than really what it is intended to convey. It's going to change you. It's going it's to open your eyes. It's going to broaden your horizons. Now, enough about me. Let's talk about you. You're going to need to know how to do this. You're going to need to know. And you're on a need-to-know basis. So again, I'm just going to um, say uh, thank you to the folks that uh, uh, have been viewing this. And uh, the duration of the view is of uh, a certain level of importance. But the reach that I've seen um, through my analytics has surprised me, has surprised me. So, I'm not selling anything other than me. That's what I have been doing for the last 50 years. I'm selling me. That's what I sell. If you go to my website, you're not going to find much to buy. You're really not going to find much to purchase. But this wire is intended for a certain audience. I hope this wire has reach because remember something. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. And what's important to me um, is very personal to me. I, that's the first thing I thought of when I woke up this morning. But I'm starting to see the fruits of my efforts. And uh, I've stuck to certain mantras over the years. For example, you get more flies with honey than you do with the vinegar. So, chapter 17, detailing your design.
Give me one second. Give me one second. Because sometimes <laughs> closing an active doesn't want to work. So let me have to manually close these. Give me a moment. The last exercise uh, was pretty lengthy. I've got so much to do today. Okay. Now, uh, excuse me. Chapter 17, detailing your design. Give me one moment. Let me open the uh, sample exercise. That's it, C-17 sample building RVT or the metric version of the same. Look that upgrade and I'm gonna read verbatim. As you've seen so far, you can show information in Autodesk Revit software in a variety of ways, including 3D views, plans, sections, and elevations. In each of these cases, the geometry is typically modeled based on design intent, meaning that your goal isn't to model everything, but to model enough to capture the overall scope of the proposed building. To this end, it becomes necessary to embellish the model in specific views with more detailed information. These take the shape of 2D detail elements that you will use to augment views and add extra information. In this chapter, you'll learn to create details, add detail components to families, learn efficient detailing, reuse details from other files. Let me just uh, stretch this project browser over a little bit. Oh God, I can't wait till we get to the MEP section. Ugh, mechanical engineering, it just sometimes floats my boat. Did you go architectural engineering or did you go mechanical engineering? Let's go both ways. Creating details. If you're accustomed, accustomed to using two dimensional CAD applications to create drawings, you should first be aware of how the detailing process in Revit differs from AutoCAD or any CAD drafting platform. In Autodesk AutoCAD software, for example, and this includes AutoCAD LT and some of the others, MicroStation, you would create a new DWG file and then add lines, arcs, circles, hatch patterns, text, and dimensions to help develop a detail. You might use blocks to, com to combine repeatable elements to increase efficiency and maintain consistency. In Revit, you will create additional views within the project file to which you might add 2D embellishment along with annotation and dimensions. Details can incorporate parts of the 3D model or can be empty views exclusive to 2D elements. Using view types for detailing, Before we discuss the process of detailing, let's review the fundamental views in which you can create details, detail views, and drafting views. Detail views. Detail views are essentially subsets of the views we've created previously in this book, such as plans, elevations, and sections. When you create a new section or core out, you have the option to select detail view from the type selector. The model is still displayed in the detail view, although you can set the, the display model view property to do not display if necessary. Because you can use detailing tools in any view, we will refer to any view that displays the model as a detail view throughout the remainder of this chapter. Refer to chapter two, exploring the user interface and organizing projects for more information about the difference between callouts and detail views. Drafting views. Drafting views do not display model content. Instead, they are simply a blank canvas within which you can create details using only 2D elements such as lines, arcs, circles, or 2D families. Drafting views can be associated with sections or callouts, but those view references will display a reference label such as sim, similar, or tip, typical. You can customize the reference label value and the type properties of each view. Download 
and open the file C17 sample building RVT or C17 sample metric dot RVT from the book's webpage www.cybex.com Go Mastering Revit 2018. From the project browser, activate the view section 2 and you will see an overall section of the building. View section 2 in the project browser. We'll create a more detailed section call out of the exterior wall at the right side of the view. Let's walk through the steps to generate this view. Switch to the view tab in the ribbon. Locate the create panel, then click call out rectangle. And I'll read the tooltip. Creates a rectangular call out in the view. Call outs, planar detail, isolates a specific portion of the model geometry to show a greater level of detail. Reference callouts allow the same view to be referenced more than one time in a project. And if you pull the fly out, pull down arrow, you can create this callout view as a rectangle, or you could uh, create it as a with a with a sketch in a sketch mode, so that it's not necessarily just rectilinear. So let's start with the rectangle tool. Let's go down to the uh, status bar and take a look. Click to place first corner of call out. My little timer might be there. And that's, I'll be honest with you, let you know what that is. That little green timer you see there, that's the countdown to my social security disability, 64 years old, return on my investment and my pension and my annuity returns. <laughs> so that's all that is. That's for me. I'm just waiting on a friend. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go out gracefully. You think, I'm going to go off on a tangent here for a second. You work your whole life to get to retirement, and some folks count down the days. And then they retire, and they go down to the park, and they fish, or do whatever it is that they do. They go sit in a bar or whatever, and then profess to know everything. It's not my intent to retire, but I just want you to know that uh, I want to enjoy the years prior to retirement. Before I retire, I want to enjoy the years prior to retirement and not necessarily have to, uh, have to uh, lose my smile in the process. All right, so I just want to add that caveat uh, to this instructional series because, again, this reach, this, this wire is uh, uh, for a specific audience. In the type selector, change the view type um, to... Wall section, it's already there, wall section. You can see building section, you can see wall section. Family section, type, wall section. Sketch a rectangular region around the exterior wall at the right side of the building. A region, clicked once, I dragged it down, and Right about there. Wait, nope, out no. there. However, this I want to drag up. Oop. You can drag these with grips. As you can see, little grips appear when you select them. Right, so there's the call section. Notice the annotations aren't on it yet. And I'll reiterate it. Maybe I'm jumping ahead. Because it's not on a sheet. It's gonna know what sheet it is, it's gonna know what detail number it is. It's going to save you a lot of time, and anyone in AutoCAD is going to know, or not know, that if they don't get with the program, they're wasting their time, they're wasting their firm's money, and I'm going to insist that they know. All right, so, sketch a rectangular region around the exterior wall, the right side of the building, we did that. When you finish sketching the new core out, it should look like the section view shown in figure 171. Double click the core out head to activate the view, the new view. Or alternatively, you can right-click the callout and select Go to View. Ordinarily, I'm one of those. I select it, I right mouse click on it. You can say Go to View. Or you could double-click on it and go to View. Or notice, or notice that if you look, is it created yet? No, hold on, hold on. Call out section, call out section. Uh, it hasn't put it there yet. 
Well, maybe I'm just not saying it. All right, let me just double click on it and see if it pops up. Oh, wait, I'm not done yet. Well, first of all, I'm not done yet. So that's, hold on a second. <laughs> right mouse click, go to view. Hold on. Speed bump, see your moment. It was a wall section, not a call out view. All right, so there it is. Section two. Now, wait a second, that's not right. Oh, no, no, section two, call out view, there it is. I'm sorry. I thought it was a building section, not a wall, uh, wall section. You see how it, it actually makes a, a distinction between the two, between a building section and a, a wall section. All right, so drafting views before we get off, uh, off kilter. I right, so we went to the view, and there's the view. And it has view properties. This uh, element, this, this element, has view properties. In the properties palette, change the view name to wall section north. View name. Oops. Excuse me. Wall section north. Enter. S set detail level to medium and change scale to half inch equals a foot or one to 25 in the detail, just right here in the detail level, change it to medium. And in the view scale, change it to half inch equals a foot. And again, we could have did it from the view control bar, right? Detail level, medium, and uh, scale value, you could change it to uh, half inch or 124th XP. Oops. All right, so we've got it set. Let's take a look at that. Looks kind of good. Let's just double check our math and let's go to course again and see how it's the difference between the three. It's relatively, relatively significant. Relatively significant. All right, let's, uh, and just let you know if you, if you double click down on your mouse wheel, you'll zoom extents. And if you ZA, you'll zoom extents. And if, if you have all your windows open and you go WT, you'll uh, get all of your windows tiled. And if you ZA then, you'll have all of them centered within uh, their respective view and uh, centered on the canvas. Oh, got a runny nose this morning. I hope I don't have COVID-19. But I don't. I, I, I'm, as I go to the doctor, they, they check... Uh, we check my temperature when I get there. So I haven't blown a gasket yet. All right, so um, here we are, we're still there. Um, being that we're working in this uh, detail, I may, I may expand this. All right, so you have taken the first step toward creating the path from the overall down to the specific. From the plan and an overall section, you have created a wall section. Before we drill down even further, Let's break the view down to isolate the transition conditions at the floor and roof. Select the crop region in the wall section view, and you will see a number of view break icons. Click one of the horizontal view break icons along either vertical edge of the crop region. So if you go down to do not crop view, hold on a second, hold that thought. Select the Crop Region tool in the Wall Section view. Hold on a second. There you go. All right. And you will see a number of view break icons. Horizontal view break, right? Down here. Vertical view break. Click one of the horizontal view break icons along either vertical edge of the crop region. Let's do this one. You have now 
you now have two crop subregions, but you will need to create one more. Select the crop region again, and then click and drag the grip at the bottom of the upper subregion to stretch it downward. Do not drag it too close to the low subregion because it will rejoin the subregions back into the original crop boundary. Use the grips at the top edge of the bottom edge of the three subregions to sh show the intersection conditions with level one, two, and three. Oh, I see what they're trying to tell us. Go like this, and then go like that. So now we have three crop regions. I can make these a little bigger. They're not perfect, but they're close. Le roof, level two and level one. Let's see here. Roof, level two, and level one. Okay, so we have three, now we have three crop regions. Use the grips at the top edge and bottom edge of the three subregions to show the intersection conditions with the level one, level two, and roof. Now I can take this one and drag it up so it doesn't show roof one. And then I could make sure this one goes up a little bit. Okay, that's about right. So now I have three crop regions. Select the crop region once again, and you will see vertical double arrows at the middle of each subregion. You see these arrows right here? Move view region. Select the crop region once again, and you will see vertical double arrows at the middle of each subregion. Use these arrows to move the subregions closer together. All right, let me see if I can do this. You know what? I'm, I'm probably gonna need uh, glasses again <laughs> if I if I don't uh... <laughs> get my head out of my butt. All right, so. Again, grab this crop region. You can drag these independently up or down. Pretty powerful. The final results will, um, should look like the image on the screen. And these are uh, wall section view uh, broken into subregions. Working with the detailing process. The devil is in the details. Mmm, guaranteed fresh from Quick Check. Oh, really good coffee. I put it right there with Starbucks Tall Blonde Roast. Ah, okay. Now that you have completed the setup of a detail view, We will discuss three different methodologies which you can approach the detailing process. Standalone detailing, hybrid detailing, and modeling, uh, model detailing. These are terms we invented to help you understand and plan your detailing efforts as your skills improve in the Revit environment. Standalone detailing, beginner. If you are relatively new to the Revit environment, you might choose to develop your details without any part of the 3D model serving the detail. In this scenario, you can use either detail views or drafting views. However, you may tend to use more of the latter. If you use detail views, the model, the display model, view property, and the, views, and the properties palette with the view selected will most often be set to do not display. The display model settings allow you to see the model components in a regular line weight, half tone, or not at all in the detail view. With a standalone approach, with a standalone detailing approach, you forfeit some ability to ensure your details accurate, accurately reflect the model condition, the model condition. In a detailed view, excuse me, you may temporarily return the display model view property to normal 
to half tone or half tone. But you may be able to draft more comfortably using the blank canvas of an empty view. Hybrid detailing intermediate. As you become more experienced with detailing in Revit, you may start to use a more balanced number of detail views and drafting views. With a hybrid approach, hybrid fiber coaxial network, you will maintain the model in any detailed views and you will add detailed components to embellish the 3D model. This approach tends to yield a more accurate representation of the intended design, but it will require more time and care to maintain the model as the model evolves throughout the design process. This is the workflow used by most teams at detailing in Revit. Okay, they have a, uh, a detail here in figure 17.3 that shows an embellishment of the detail, with hybrid detail, with some insulation and a little more detail of the brick uh, facade and in the lower uh, level um, crop region. I'm not redrawn for you, but you get the point. The display model view property has been set to half tone. The display model view property has been set to half tone. Give me a second. So I see, says the blind man. All right, give me a second. In this one, it's set to half tone. Now, what I'm not seeing is the, hold on a second. Give me a moment. Give me a moment. relatively important because what it does is it takes the model element and sets it to half tone and the drafted embellishment is in a darker shade and um, you can see it's, it's it's not like that now everything is consistently colored and uh, the line weights are consistent in that case I turn the thin lines off and on and you'll see um, but as of this particular moment I'm not able to set this particular cropped region to half tone, and uh, I have to figure out why. So give me a second. I was an MEP solution specialist once. I'm sure I could figure it out. All right, note to self, find that solution. All right, we move on for a second because I don't want to waste your time or my uh, eight track tape that I'm recording this on, my cassette, my, my cassette drive. All right, so uh, that's a wax nostalgic, but we've got things to do, and I gotta be out of here by 12. Model detailing advanced. The most complex approach to detailing can also be the most efficient. Once you become familiar with creating families and customizing your project templates, the approach we refer to as model detailing still involves the use of some detail components. However, they're embedded into model elements where applicable. For example, in a wood frame structure, detail elements such as silk plates, studs, joists, or anchors can be embedded in wall type sections, wall type definitions. The details will display automatically when the walls are displayed in a section detail view. Wow. With any of these three methods we've described, there's a range in which you can use the model to help generate your details. 
You should plan your approach before you begin detailing your project. As always, the more time you spend preparing your template content in the beginning, the less time you'll need to develop your details later on the project. And that goes for me making these videos, too. If I read through this first and then prepared the video, it's a little better. But going through it on the first take, you're going to see some glitches. But then again, that's me. I'm a very transparent guy. I got nothing on it. All right, so detailing tools. Uh, when you... Um, Give me a second, I'll just think of something. Even when you're creating details, Revit has a variety of parametric tools to allow you to leverage working in the BIM environment. You can use these tools to create strictly 2D geometry or to augment details you are trying to create from 3D plans, sections, or callouts. To become truly efficient at using Revit to create the drawings necessary to both design and document your project, it is important to become acquainted with these tools. You will find yourself using them over and over again throughout your process. All these tools are located on the detail panel of the annotate tab. And uh, this is pretty much what they drew before. This installation right here. They had this. Oops, not, I don't have it centered, but they had it here. And they had the back, they had all this half toned. And then you can see that the insulation would stand out. All right, so uh, we'll get to that. So in the uh, Anate tab, in the detail panel, you'll see there's uh, all sorts of drafting tools. All sorts of bells and whistles. And you can see, just like uh, modeling in the family editor, you can... Uh, do the same with the 2D um, detail lines and model lines. All right, so this small but very potent toolbox is what you will need to familiarize yourself with to create a majority of the 2D line work and components that will become the details in your project. To better demonstrate how these tools are used, let's step through them to explain each one's purpose. Note that some of the tools may not be available depending on the active view. For best results, make sure you have a plan or detailed view before continuing. Let's go to plan view. And using the detail line tool. That's sweet. Creates view-specific lines. Detail lines are visible only in the view in which they are drawn. To sketch lines that exist in 3D space as part of the building model, and that display in all views, use the model line tool. That's very important. Did you hear what they just said? Did you hear what I said? Are you listening to me? Put your thinking cap on. It's saying that a detail line will only exist in the view that you're drawing it in. It won't exist in the other views. It won't carry over to another view. So if you have uh, two level one plans and you draw a detail line in one of them, you're not going to see it in the other one. But if you draw a model line in it, you will. That's all. But it's important. One, because sometimes you don't want to, and two, because sometimes you really want to. All right, so that's important. Um, blah, 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 blah. They also have an arrangement to their placement meaning you can layer them underneath or on top of other objects. This is especially important when you begin using a combination of regions, detail lines, and model content to create your details. Using the detail line tool is fairly easy. Selecting the tool will change your ribbon tab to look like figure 17.a. And then boom, you have your uh, options bar within the context of selecting the tool. Uh, contextual toolbar opens up, light olive drab, and you have your options bar and some other tools available to you within the context of invoking the command. As you see, anyone in AutoCAD knows a little bit about line types. You have that. Um, and you don't have to worry about LT scale and PLT scale and all that horrible garbage that was programmed into AutoCAD. Oy vey, what a nightmare. I mean, you still have to worry about it. But oh, what a nightmare. Oh, if anyone's had anyone hover over you and tell you that they just didn't like that line type or that line style and had you go back to the layering scheme, oh, they, 
Everybody with their lighting schemes and directory tree structures. What a nightmare, and they're still doing it, insisting on it. A word of advice. If your son or daughter is in the, engine, in the AC industry and their boss is insisting, and let's say they're young, and their boss is insisting that they do it a certain way, you know, they're leading them to the unemployment office. As a parent, I'd be pissed. I'd be so pissed if I knew that my child was working in a firm with a intermediate level manager that, ins that was, had carte blanche uh, to, <laughs> to formulate their uh, department any way they want it yet curtail uh, the advancement in the uh, industry as more Moore's law just comes more and more into fruition. I, I would be so irritated as a, as a parent of that child. Even if they were my cousin, if it was my cousin, I, I, would be, I would be perplexed as to how a company would allow it to happen. How would a company allow a manager to manage a department or a director for that matter how would, a, how would a company allow a director to manage a department leading the team down the wrong road? So, you know, next firm I go to, I'll be looking for that. The first thing, I'll be looking for that. That's what I do. I'm kind of like an analyst, a business analyst. I like to analyze folks' companies. I like to go in, look at the culture, watch how they work, look at their clicks, find their efficiencies, their deficiencies, personality traits. I find it interesting. That's why I bounce around a lot. I like, I like, to, I like company culture. I like to go in with the, the fly on the wall mentality. I don't know anything. And uh, slowly ascertain what's going on. I tell you, you learn a lot about business that way. Not undercover boss, but kind of. I mean, kind of like undercover boss. You know, you're really not the boss, but in your mind, sometimes you think you are to a certain extent, just watching kind of undercover how they're approaching the industry practice. All right, so um, it's going to happen again real soon for me. I'm back on assignment. I, uh, I, I feel uh, the pressure mounting, and uh, I feel a deployment is in my near future. Whether or not that's going to be private sector, public sector, whether or not that's going to be uh, prevailing wage or uh, right to work is going to be uh, up for uh, debate. Again, because labor studies play a big part in it. All right, so, yeah. The detail line tool is the first tool located on the detail panel of the annotate tape. This tool is the closest thing that you'll find to CAD drafting because it allows you to create view-specific line work using different line styles, and it provides tools for drawing and manipulating different line shapes. Detail lines are, uh, are view-specific. They only appear in the view in which they are drawn. They also have an arrangement to their placement, meaning you can lay them underneath or on top of other objects. This is especially important when you begin using combination of regions, detail lines, and model content to create your details. Coffee's kicking in. Using the detail line tool, tool is fairly easy. Selecting the tool will change your ribbon to tab, to tab to look like the figure that's on the screen. This new tab will have several panels that allow you to add and manipulate line work. Right off the bat, you see all the primitive geometric shapes and the line styles and line types. There are three major panels on this new tab, line style, draw, and modify. Line style, draw, and modify. Because of their use sequence, selecting the line type, creating the shape, and modifying the line, we'll talk about them in order from left to right. From left to right, they're going the other way. This is from right to left. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Boing. Maybe the coffee isn't kicking in. <laughs> we'll talk about them in order from right to left. Line style. <sighs> Speaking of lines, I hope you've given that up for Lent. Line style. This panel includes a drop down menu that allows you to choose a line style in which to produce the line work in this view. The drop-down menu has all the default Revit line styles, as well as cu any custom ones you might have made for your project or to accommodate office or client standards. The active line will be the one displayed in the drop-down window before it's expanded. So, that's saying is you can create other ones, import them from other projects. Any line, gas, fence, stuff like that. You've seen that, right? On these, uh, 
outside plant drawings that you have to submit, gas lines, all that good stuff, water lines, call before you dig, fiber optic, underground, micro duct, seven way airborne fiber tubing, corrugated inner duct, all that good stuff. It's underneath the streets, hidden away from the public view. So, yeah, you can create any type of line you want. Now, speaking of lines, The drop down menu has all the default Revit line styles as well as any custom ones you might have made for your project or to accommodate office or client standards. Standards. The active line will be the one displayed in the drop down window before it's expanded. I reiterate. New line styles can be added at any time in the project and many offices find it necessary to add custom line styles beyond the thin, medium, and wide ones available in Revit out of the box. To add more styles or just to see the complete list, choose additional settings. I lost my place. From the Manage tab and select Line Styles. For more information about creating your own custom line styles, refer to Chapter 4, Configuring Templates and Standards. All right, so there you, so you can see um, there's a few. And we can get into line weight projection a little bit later. Um, as far as the weight, line weight. Um, and you can see there's, there's line patterns and all that good stuff. And if you pull down, you can see there's... You set the scale when you set the line, right? So just think about that for a second. If you're, drawing a three, if you're an HVAC contractor... And you're drawing your shop drawings three inch in scale, which they all do, usually. Um, and you're using dash dot dot dot, and you're gonna put it on a uh, 36 by 48 or 30 by 42, right? Uh, or if you work at the airport and you put it on a 36 by 60, you could uh, set the line pattern scale to be three eighths, right? And you'll have to do that. <clears throat> Well, you won't see the spacing between the dots. Read between the lines. All right, so now, draw. The draw panel contains a number of geometry. Oops, I screwed up. Hold on, hold on. Let me get back over here. I lost my contextual toolbar right there. Draw. The draw panel contains a number of geometry tools to draw within the active view. The tool allows you to create lines, boxes, circles, splines, ellipses, and arcs. The last tool in the bottom row is the pick tool. This tool allows you to select a line previously drawn or a portion of a model element, say an edge, and add line work on top of the existing shape. So I'll read the tool tip verbatim. Pick lines. Creates a line based on an existing wall line or edge selected in the drawing area. Excuse me. To select a chain of lines, move the cursor over a line segment, press tab to highlight the entire chain, and click. Modify. The Modify panel has several tools that you can use to modify any of the line work already placed in the view. The larger tools from left to right are Align, Offset Mirror, Axis, mirror, line, move, uh, move, copy, rotate, and trim. Now, these don't behave like the same uh, counterparts in AutoCAD. To a certain extent, they don't. Um, we'll be going into these a little bit, but I can't go the, into these all the way just yet, but these are very powerful. Now, a line aligns one or more elements with a selected element. You can lock the alignments, make sure the other model, the other model changes not affect it. You see what just happened there? What it did was it, it aligned the wall the fir to the first selection, right? The first selection was aligned to what, and then aligned what to that, and that's what it did. It selected the wall that it wanted to align the other wall to, and then the second selection, or the second pick, aligned it to it. Now, yeah, so that's a very powerful tool, and you can see there's uh, the move, 
move selected elements to the specified location in the current view. You can also move elements by dragging them. However, the move tool offers additional options to allow you more precise, precise placement. You can pick a base point. But this tool is tricky. You have to practice this because you can select an element, then hit the tool, move tool, or you can select the move tool and then select the element. And in that process, you're going to see that in some cases, in order to get the pick point dialog or the pick point um, availability, you're going to have to hit enter. So you're going to have to spend some time with that. And the the, um, the keyboard shortcut is MV. So the move command is a little, little tricky. Um, but again, it said you can move things just by hovering over them and dragging them, right? You can move things that way, but you can also Let's say select this, then invoke the move command, then select a base point, and then move it. And then move it. And if you notice the temporary dimensions, this is going to help you. Sorry for talking to you like you're in kindergarten. That can be so condescending. <laughs> My kids, they want to punch me in the face when I talk to them like that. <laughs> so condescending. I'm such an asshole sometimes. I apologize. I don't mean to be. If I'm abrasive, I apologize. I know I'm a little rough around the edges. But I'm not wet behind the ears. So, now, that's the move tool. Now, uh, let me go back to that. Uh, in the context of... Uh, what else we got? We got offset. Copies or moves a selected element, such as a line, wall, or beam, at specified distance perpendicular to its length. You can... Offset a single element or a chain of elements belonging to the same family. Now, notice how that just did that. You can do that multiple times. You can see, um, if I was to invoke the offset command, graphical, numerical, and offset distance, and then copy, right? So if I wanted to, I don't know, what can I offset? Give me something. Like I can offset this wall if I wanted to. Now, if I use zoom, let me show you something about this tool. If you kind of hover around left and right here, it's going to offset on that side. And this is very important in parallel conduits. It operates the same way when you're paralleling and rolling offsets and things like that, multi-tiered conduits on trapeze. <laughs> you're, going to, you're going to have to do this if you really want to speed a trapeze. <laughs> if you go over to that city and you start getting into this industry <laughs> and you start to rotate around some of these shops, you're going to see some of these shops, it's like it's like a fucking circus. <laughs> it's like a circus. It really is. You gotta see. And engineers take the most heat. They take the most heat, man. Because that is, they, I'll tell you, this is my experience, and maybe maybe this is coming from my perspective. But the blue collar side of this industry, the misguided percentage. A lot of folks that exist in the blue collar realm, and because they are meeting in the middle at these particular junctions in these projects, they, they tend to uh, look at engineers in a very, very skewed light. They, a lot of them, for many reasons, think that they're full of shit, and they, 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 uh, they kind of hold a bit of a little animosity. There's definitely a little bit of animosity when it comes to the trades and the engineers that are designing these uh, structures. And I know, I know, I know, they're, they're hearing it all the way down from, you know, the change orders and the back charges. So, and there I mean, lies, you know, the battle, you know. Change orders and back charges, retainage, and uh, bonding companies coming in and putting you on the street with all your fucking tools, your properties, everything you, you, you own, because you thought you could do the project and you bit off more than you can chew. And the GC takes you, breaks you across the coals, the marshal comes in, seizes all your assets, and next thing you know, you're doing business with somebody else. But let me tell you something about the New York State contract reporter. You don't have to be doing business as the business you started and not keep changing your name and try to get back into the good graces of these uh, lucrative contracts because they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna want to see proof 
Now you're just you're not the same company we just fired two weeks ago that decided to change its name to some other entity. They, they'll, they'll see right through that bullshit too. So you know, doing business in New York City is is a whole other ball game. I'm just letting you know. I'm just letting you know. I don't know why I brought that up. Offset from center. You know, and sometimes you know you see some of these shops that you've worked for. And we knew this, the whole fucking staff, you know, and then to, to know that they're no longer in existence. I mean, you don't really want to, you know, wish harm on others, but as a human being, you have to say to yourself, well, you know what? They got what they asked for. So, it is what it is. Don't bite off more than you can chew in this industry. And I would highly, highly, uh, recommend um, being really careful in what contracts you pursue. They'll make you pay. All right. Sorry. 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 All right. So, um, yeah, there are lots of tools. There's the copy command, the mirror axis, and then the mirror draw axis, modify, uh, uh, rotate. Um, trim extend to corner, trim extend single element, trim extend multiple elements, the split element, and then the split with gap, the pin, unpin, pin, unpin, and then the delete. And then I'm not going to get into the other, I can't go into all of these right now, this video is running really long because it's first thing in the morning, and you know me, I want to talk. Uh, I'll talk your ear off. Um, and, but it doesn't really go into all this just yet. It doesn't go into all this just yet. It just lets you know that these commands are available. So what I'm going to do is we're going we to use this uh, line work tool, which is a certification objective. And I wanted to go back and, and, and just double check on that halftone issue that I, um, uh, I breezed through so that I could uh, embellish some of the insulation in that um, section detail of that uh, three uh, crop regions that we did earlier. So uh, I can re-explain that to you um, when we come back on the other video. So, uh, I know I sprinkled in a whole bunch of stuff and I went off this way and that way on this one. But you have to remember something. I've been in this industry so long that I've seen so many things that they, when I start talking about it, they come back into my mind and I want to share them with you because a lot of folks that are doing this for a living, they don't go in the field. They're always in the office. Some of them make it into the field and they, they work within the realm of these tradesmen. But see, where I find my strength is that I have the luxury of being able to meander in both circles. I'm like a chameleon, you know? If I have to put on a pair of boots, I can. If I have to put on a tie, I can. And, and I wear a lot of hats. So that's why I'm able to kind of like, you know, sneak around. Sometimes, you know, I, I can make my resume do whatever I won't feel like doing. I'm just set my resume up to get a job I'm, that I'm not even qualified for, but I know that's what that company's looking for. And I still get in the door. It's, to me, it's a hobby. I, that might sound like an insane thing to do, but you gotta know something. When I was in telecommunications, I was in engineering, but I wanted to be in marketing in advertising. And there's a few other avenues within the AEC industry uh, besides chasing the money. So what I'm bringing to the table and what I offer this uh, up to you as, uh, I wasn't lying when I say you know, this business that I've created uh, is in the foreign trade uh, industry as well. Because these folks come off the boat a loss, and uh, I have the best interest in mind. Maybe I don't have yours, because lots of folks in this country take things for granted. It's the ones that come here and fight and claw that I have the respect for, not the ones that take everything for granted. So, I've got a lot of issues, and I don't have an axe to grind, but uh, I will convey my point. There's more to this than meets the eye. Architecture is a very, very serious subject. It's not for the faint of heart. So, if you're a mama's boy, you know, go run 
هم چیه مابا 